My husband hated my success and had an emotional affair with his ex. I gave him a second chance but ended up choosing myself. I never thought I'd be in this situation, but here I am, pouring my heart out to strangers on the internet. I'm Darla, 28F, and I've been married to Jimmy, 30M, for three years now. We met during our sophomore year of college at a mutual friend's birthday party. I remember it like it was yesterday, Jimmy was trying to open a bottle of wine with a shoe, don't ask, and I couldn't stop laughing at his determined expression. We hit it off immediately, bonding over our shared love of terrible sci-fi movies and a mutual hatred of olives. We dated for four years before getting married. Those years were filled with late-night study sessions, weekend road trips, and dreams of our future together. Jimmy was always the more practical one, planning our finances and talking about stable careers. I was the dreamer, always coming up with wild business ideas or imagining us traveling the world. Somehow, we balanced each other out perfectly. After graduation, we both landed entry-level jobs in our fields. I started as a junior marketing associate at a small tech startup, while Jimmy got a job as a software engineer at a mid-sized company. We were ecstatic, it felt like everything was falling into place. We rented a tiny apartment together, furnished it with second-hand furniture, and spent our weekends exploring our new city. Our wedding was small but perfect. We got married in Jimmy's parents' backyard, surrounded by our closest friends and family. I'll never forget the look on Jimmy's face when he saw me walking down the aisle, it was a mix of love, happiness and a touch of nervousness that was so quintessentially Jimmy. We honeymooned in Costa Rica, spending two weeks hiking through rainforests and lounging on beaches. It was during this trip that we really started talking about our future, we both wanted to advance in our careers, save up to buy a house, and eventually start a family. The first year of our marriage was blissful. We were both working hard but always made time for each other. We'd have weekly date nights, try new recipes together, and spend lazy Sundays binge watching our favorite shows. Jimmy would surprise me with flowers for no reason, and I'd leave little love notes in his lunch. We were that sickeningly sweet couple that everyone else rolled their eyes at, but we didn't care. Things started to change about a year into our marriage. I had been putting in extra hours at work, taking on additional projects and really trying to make a name for myself. My hard work paid off when I got my first promotion to marketing manager. I was over the moon, this was a big step up and came with a significant pay raise. I couldn't wait to tell Jimmy. I remember that night clearly. I had picked up a bottle of champagne on my way home, planning to surprise Jimmy with the good news. When I got home, I found him playing video games, something he'd been doing more and more lately. I shared my news, expecting him to be as excited as I was. But his reaction was lukewarm, to say the least. He congratulated me, but there was something off about his tone. When I asked if everything was okay, he just shrugged and said he was tired. Over the next few months, I noticed Jimmy becoming more withdrawn. He started spending more time playing video games or browsing on his phone. Our date nights became less frequent, and when we did go out, Jimmy seemed distracted. I tried to talk to him about it, but he would just say everything was fine and change the subject. At work, things were going great for me. I was thriving in my new role, taking on more responsibilities and really making an impact. My boss started mentioning future opportunities for advancement, and I was excited about the possibilities. But at home, the atmosphere was becoming increasingly tense. Jimmy's behavior continued to worsen. He started making snarky comments about my long hours at work, implying that I cared more about my job than our marriage. When I talk about my projects or achievements, he'd either zone out or find a way to change the subject. It hurt, this was the man who had always been my biggest cheerleader, and now it felt like he couldn't care less about my success. Things came to a head last week when I got another promotion. I was now a senior marketing manager, a role I had been working towards for months. The promotion came with another substantial pay raise, putting my salary significantly higher than Jimmy's. When I shared the news, Jimmy's reaction was cold. He muttered a half-hearted congratulations and then said, I guess you're the breadwinner now, huh? Before walking out of the room. That night, we had our biggest fight ever. Jimmy accused me of being selfish and only caring about my career. He said I was changing, becoming someone he didn't recognize anymore. He brought up all sorts of things from the past, how I used to cook dinner more often, how we used to spend more time together on weekends, how I used to ask for his advice on work stuff but now I just made decisions on my own. I was shocked and hurt. I reminded him that he was the one who had become distant, that I had tried to involve him in my work life but he always seemed uninterested. I told him that his insecurities were causing problems in our relationship and that I shouldn't have to diminish my success to make him feel better. The argument ended with Jimmy sleeping on the couch, and we've barely spoken since then. The atmosphere in our home is icy, to say the least. I'm hurt and confused. I love Jimmy, 
and I always thought we were a team. I never imagined my success could cause such problems in our marriage. To make matters worse, I've noticed that Jimmy has been spending a lot of time texting someone. He's very secretive about it, always angling his phone away from me and quickly putting it down if I walk into the room. When I asked him about it, he got defensive and accused me of not trusting him. It's making me paranoid, is he confiding in someone else about our problems? Or is it something more? I'm at a loss. I don't know how to fix this situation. I've tried talking to Jimmy, but he just shuts down or gets angry. I've confided in my best friend, Lisa, 27F, who I've known since high school. She thinks Jimmy is being unreasonable and that I shouldn't let his insecurities hold me back. But she's always been very career-focused herself, so I wonder if she's really seeing the whole picture. Part of me wonders if this is the beginning of the end for our marriage. I never thought success in my career could cause such problems in my personal life. I always imagined Jimmy and I taking on the world together, celebrating each other's victories. Now it feels like my victories are driving a wedge between us. I'm not ready to give up on us yet. We've been through so much together, from cramming for finals in college to supporting each other through the loss of Jimmy's dad two years ago. But I also don't want to sacrifice my hard work and achievements. I've worked incredibly hard to get where I am, and I'm proud of what I've accomplished. I'm looking for advice. Has anyone been in a similar situation? How did you handle it? Is there a way to save my marriage without giving up my career? Or am I fighting a losing battle? I feel like I'm being forced to choose between my marriage and my career, and it's tearing me apart. Update 1, it's been a month since my last post, and a lot has happened. Thank you all for your advice and support. I've been trying to process everything and figure out the best way forward. Your comments gave me a lot to think about, and I'm grateful for the different perspectives you all shared. After my last post, I decided to take some of your suggestions and try to have an honest, open conversation with Jimmy. I planned a nice dinner at home, hoping to create a relaxed atmosphere where we could talk things through. I even took a day off work to prepare everything, I made Jimmy's favorite lasagna from scratch, bought a nice bottle of wine, the same kind we had at our wedding, and even put on the dress I wore on our first date, thankfully it still fit. When Jimmy got home, he seemed surprised by the effort I'd made. For a moment, I saw a flicker of the old Jimmy, the one who used to look at me like I was the only person in the world. We sat down to eat, and at first, we made awkward small talk about our days. Then, gathering my courage, I tried to open up the conversation. I told Jimmy how much I loved him and valued our relationship. I reminded him of all we'd been through together, the good times and the bad. I brought up memories from college, like the time we drove eight hours to see his favorite band in concert, or when we stayed up all night comforting each other after we'd both bombed a big exam. I talked about our wedding day, and how certain I had been that we would face whatever life threw at us, together. Then, I opened up about how hurt I was by his recent behavior. I explained that my success at work didn't mean I was trying to leave him behind or change who I was. I was still the same Darla who loved bad karaoke and could quote every line from The Princess Bride. I told him how much it hurt that he couldn't seem to be happy for me, that instead of celebrating my achievements, he seemed to resent them. At first, Jimmy was quiet, just listening. Then, to my surprise, he broke down. I had only seen Jimmy cry twice before, at his father's funeral, and on our wedding day. Seeing him so vulnerable broke my heart. He admitted that he'd been feeling insecure and inadequate. He confessed that he'd always thought he'd be the provider in our relationship, and my success was making him question his role. He talked about feeling left behind, like I was moving forward while he was standing still. It was a breakthrough moment, finally, we were communicating honestly. I felt a glimmer of hope that maybe we could work through this. I reassured Jimmy that I didn't see him as less valuable just because I earned more. I reminded him of all the ways he contributed to our relationship that had nothing to do with money. However, just as I thought we were making progress, Jimmy dropped a bombshell. He confessed that he'd been talking to his ex-girlfriend, Kate, 29F, for the past few months. Kate was Jimmy's high school sweetheart. They had dated for three years before breaking up when they went to different colleges. I knew about her, of course, but Jimmy had always insisted they were ancient history. According to Jimmy, he had run into Kate at a coffee shop near his office a few months ago. They had started chatting, and Jimmy found himself opening up to her about his feelings of inadequacy and his struggles in our marriage. He said Kate understood him in a way I didn't anymore, and that they'd been meeting up for coffee regularly to talk about their problems. I was stunned. The secret of texting suddenly made sense, but this felt like a betrayal. When I asked if there was anything physical between them, Jimmy swore there wasn't, but the emotional intimacy they developed hurt just as much. I felt like I had been punched in the gut. While I had been working late trying to advance my career, my husband had been confiding in his ex-girlfriend. We spent hours talking that night. 
Jimmy swore he would cut off contact with Kate and suggested we try couples counseling. Part of me wanted to agree immediately, to do anything to save our marriage. But another part of me was angry and hurt. I told Jimmy I needed some time to think. The next day, I did something I'm not proud of. While Jimmy was in the shower, I looked at his phone. I know it was a violation of his privacy, but I couldn't shake the feeling that he wasn't telling me everything. What I found left me reeling. There were hundreds of messages between him and Kate, far more intimate than just friendly chats. They talked about their feelings for each other, complained about their current relationships, apparently Kate was also married, and even discussed the possibility of a future together. When Jimmy got out of the shower, I confronted him with what I'd found. He turned pale and started stammering excuses. He swore again that nothing physical had happened, but admitted that his feelings for Kate had grown beyond friendship. He begged for another chance, saying he'd end things with Kate for good and that he wanted to fight for our marriage. I was too hurt and angry to think clearly. I packed a bag and went to stay with Lisa for a few days. I'm writing this update from her spare room, still trying to process everything. I feel like my world has been turned upside down. The man I thought I knew, the marriage I thought was strong despite our recent issues, it all feels like a lie now. I keep thinking back to all those nights I worked late, feeling guilty for not being home, while Jimmy was messaging Kate. I think about all the times I tried to talk to Jimmy about our problems, only to be shut down, while he was opening up to her instead. I'm torn between my love for Jimmy and the life we've built together, and the anger and betrayal I feel over his emotional affair. Seven years is a long time to be with someone. We've built a life together, we have shared friends, shared memories. The thought of walking away from all of that is terrifying. But at the same time, I don't know if I can ever trust him again. And underlying all of this is the original issue, can our marriage survive if Jimmy can't accept my success? Even if we could move past the Kate situation, would we just end up back where we started, with Jimmy resenting my achievements? I'd appreciate any advice or perspectives you all might have. How do I move forward from here? Is it even possible to rebuild trust after something like this? And how do I balance my love for Jimmy with my need for a partner who supports my success? Update 2 It's been two weeks since my last update, and I'm still trying to navigate this mess. Thank you all for your support and advice, it's been a lifeline during this difficult time. Your comments have given me a lot to think about, and I'm grateful for the different perspectives you've shared. After spending a few days at Lisa's, I decided to move back home. I felt I needed to be in our shared space to really think about our relationship and decide what I wanted to do. Walking into our apartment was harder than I expected. Everything reminded me of Jimmy and the life we'd built together, the couch we'd spent countless movie nights on, the kitchen where we'd attempted, and often failed, to recreate recipes from cooking shows, the photos of us smiling on vacations and at friends' weddings. It all felt tainted now. Jimmy was there when I arrived, looking like he hadn't slept in days. He immediately started apologizing again, telling me he'd ended things with Kate for good and deleted her number. He showed me his phone as proof, but after what had happened, it felt like too little, too late. I listened to him, but I didn't say much. I told him I needed space to think, and he agreed to sleep in the guest room. Over the next few days, we existed in an uneasy truce, barely speaking beyond necessary interactions. The apartment that had once felt so warm and full of love now felt cold and empty, even with both of us there. During this time, I threw myself into work, staying late at the office most nights. It was easier than being at home with the weight of our problems hanging over us. I found myself volunteering for extra projects, anything to keep my mind occupied and avoid going home to the awkward silence that now define my marriage. One night, I was working late when my boss, David, 45M, noticed I seemed distracted. David had always been a mentor to me, guiding me through the ups and downs of my career. He asked if everything was okay, and something in his kind tone made me break down. Before I knew it, I was telling him everything, about Jimmy's resentment of my success, the emotional affair with Kate, all of it. David listened patiently, offering me a box of tissues as I cried in his office. When I finished, he shared that he'd gone through something similar with his first wife. She had been threatened by his career success, and it had eventually led to the breakdown of their marriage. But he also told me about his current marriage, how his wife celebrated his achievements as if they were her own, and how that support had allowed both of them to thrive. His advice was invaluable, he reminded me that I shouldn't dim my light for anyone, and that a true partner would celebrate my success, not resent it. He told me that while love was important, respect and support were equally crucial in a marriage. David's words gave me a lot to think about. Talking to David gave me clarity. I realized that even if Jimmy hadn't turned into Kate, his inability to support my success was a fundamental issue in our relationship. I deserved someone who would be proud of me, not threatened by me. I deserved a partner, 
not someone who saw my achievements as a competition. With this new perspective, I sat down with Jimmy for a serious talk. I told him that while his emotional affair with Kate was painful, it was a symptom of a bigger problem. I explained that I couldn't be with someone who saw my success as a threat rather than something to celebrate. I told him about my conversation with David, leaving out the personal details, of course, and how it made me realize what I truly needed in a partner. Jimmy listened, and for the first time, I think he really heard me. He broke down, admitting that he'd been struggling with his own insecurities and that he'd handled everything terribly. He talked about feeling like he was falling behind in his own career and how my success had made him feel inadequate. He acknowledged that turning to Kate had been a huge mistake, born out of his own fears and insecurities. Jimmy asked for another chance, promising to work on himself and be the supportive partner I deserved. He suggested couples counseling again, saying he was willing to do whatever it took to save our marriage. I was touched by his sincerity, but I also knew I needed to prioritize myself. After everything that had happened, I couldn't just go back to how things were before. I told Jimmy that I thought we needed a trial separation. I suggested he move out for a month, during which time we'd both think about what we really wanted from our relationship and whether we could move past this. Jimmy was upset but agreed it might be for the best. We spent the next few days working out the logistics, he would stay with his brother, we'd divide up our finances for the month, and we'd meet once a week for coffee to check in. It was strange and painful, almost like divorcing in miniature. Jimmy moved out yesterday, and the house feels strangely empty without him. I kept finding little reminders of him, his favorite coffee mug in the cupboard, his razor in the bathroom, the dent in his pillow. It's hard not to feel a sense of loss, even though I know this separation is necessary. I'm scared about what the future holds, but I also feel a sense of relief. For the first time in months, I feel like I'm standing up for myself and what I need. I'm not sure what will happen next. Maybe this separation will give us both the space we need to grow and come back together stronger. Or maybe we'll realize we've grown too far apart. Either way, I'm committed to not compromising on my worth or my success. I'll update again once the month is up. Thank you all again for your support during this difficult time. Your advice and perspectives have been invaluable as I navigate this challenging period in my life. Update 3, it's been a month since my last update, and I've made a decision about my marriage. These past few weeks have been a roller coaster of emotions, but they've also given me the clarity I needed. During our separation, Jimmy and I had minimal contact. We agreed to meet once a week for coffee to check in, but otherwise, we lived our separate lives. It was hard at first, I missed him despite everything. The apartment felt too big and too quiet without him. I found myself reaching for my phone to text him about silly things, only to remember our situation. But as the days passed, I started to feel more like myself again. I threw myself into work, tackling new projects with renewed energy. I started taking a painting class I'd always wanted to try rediscovering a passion I'd let slide during the chaos of the past few months. I reconnected with friends I hadn't seen in a while, going out for dinners and movie nights. For the first time in months, I felt like I could breathe freely. Our weekly coffee meetings were awkward at first. We'd sit across from each other, both unsure of what to say or how to act. But as the weeks went on, we started to open up more. We talked about our feelings, our fears, our hopes for the future. It was strange, in some ways, we communicated better during this separation than we had in months of living together. Jimmy, for his part, seemed to be doing some serious self-reflection. He talked about the therapy he'd started and the realizations he was having about his insecurities and behavior. He seemed genuinely remorseful about the Kate situation and committed to working on himself. He told me about how he was trying to refocus on his own career, setting new goals for himself instead of comparing himself to me. As the end of our trial separation approached, I found myself at a crossroads. Part of me missed the life Jimmy and I had built together. I missed our inside jokes, the comfort of his presence, the history we shared. But another part of me had grown accustomed to the independence of the past month. I'd rediscovered parts of myself that I'd let slip away in the troubles of our marriage. Yesterday, Jimmy and I met for our final coffee. We both knew this was the moment of decision. The air felt heavy with anticipation as we sat down at our usual table. Jimmy spoke first, telling me how much he changed and how he wanted to make our marriage work. He promised to be my biggest cheerleader and to never let his insecurities come between us again. He talked about going to couples counseling, about rebuilding our trust, about starting fresh. I listened to him, and part of me wanted to believe it could be that simple. But as I sat there, I realized something important. While I still cared for Jimmy, the trust that had been broken wasn't just about his emotional affair with Kate. It was about his inability to support me and celebrate my successes. It was about the months of feeling alone in my own marriage, of walking on eggshells around my own achievements. 
With a heavy heart, I told Jimmy that while I cared for him and appreciated his efforts, I didn't think our marriage could recover from this. The past few months had shown me that I needed a partner who could support me unconditionally, someone who saw my success as our success. I deserved someone who would stand beside me, not behind me or in front of me, but right there with me, facing whatever came our way together. Jimmy was devastated, but I think on some level, he understood. We talked for hours, crying and reminiscing about the good times we'd had. In the end, we agreed that ending our marriage was the best decision for both of us. It was painful, but it also felt right. Today, I met with a lawyer to start the divorce proceedings. It's surreal and painful, but I also feel a sense of peace. I know I'm making the right decision for myself. This experience has taught me so much about self-worth and the importance of having a truly supportive partner. While I'm sad about the end of my marriage, I'm also excited about what the future holds. I'm going to focus on my career, my personal growth, and eventually, finding someone who can stand beside me as an equal, celebrating each other's successes. Thank you all for your support throughout this journey. Your advice and perspectives have been invaluable. While this isn't the happy ending I once imagined, I believe it's the right ending for me. Here's to new beginnings and brighter futures.